This is the motto of the show, Hour of the Truth. Rome never changes. They used to call us heretics and sent the Inquisition to kill us. Today they call us terrorists and send on their crusades. Times and methods may have changed, the goal still stays the same. Extirpate the remnant of the true word of God, Bible believing people. Suffering at the hands of Rome Cause they believed in Christ alone They died through Europe, especially Spain For they saw all but Christ is vain He suffered by His death for men To save them from their awful sin Six hundred years of martyred saints that history cannot erase with iron heel and iron hand the Roman popes rule the land those ignorant of history may be swept into apostasy we won't be loved by Rome, sweet lie with fifty million reasons why salvation is by faith alone in christ alone by grace alone a sovereign god give faith to man salvation's in the maker's hand this gospel offends rome today they offer up Another way, a counterfeit, a compromise Beware the ancient papal lie With such a cloud of witnesses Who by grace died in their Lord Recall their memory to say By the same faith we live today Hello and welcome everybody to a new video from Jörg, Juggler66, Hour of the Truth on the War on Disinformation channel where this video of course is released first because this is uh, part 35 of the book reading History of the Inquisition by Philip von Limborg. Today we have the 17th of May 2018 and it has been more than half a year since I have been done a reading, a serious reading on this book because I was busy with so many other projects and I thought, well, I have produced so many videos, it's going to take time to upload them anyway. But today I uploaded part 33, I have only part 34, and so I decided to sit down and do part 35. This book is getting more and more interesting anyway, and uh, I very much appreciate it. But that's a premiere, because this is the first reading on the new computer, since I have, since I have my uh, computer uh, changed in the beginning of the year. Uh, this is the first one now and um, well kind of funny a, a week or three ago I did another reading of that book and uh, when I was done I came to the understanding that I already read chapter 12 <laughs> which I read then. <laughs> so I did that part 34 all over again but yeah I still kept the old recording and now this is going along with the new one. It will be a little bit in di a different format because first of all I have another camera but that's of no much interest for you guys but uh, I decided to read the PDF in the way that it looks right now here so you can see this here on the left part on my screen and um, on the other side I can use pictures, pictures that I selected or maybe even pictures that we can go and do a search during the reading if it seems necessary or deems necessary to uh, get us some uh, some pictures from that uh, from that reading here and I don't use the whole screen anymore just for the reading I use this and I popped it up to 150% on the PDF 
and I hope that it is easy for you to read along, especially with this new OBS camera that I'm using since I have this new computer here. The old camera uh, a few times didn't work, the hypercam didn't work the way it should work and even left me producing videos that were unviewable and so I did work for I didn't do the work the way that I wanted to, so now I'm turning to this free OBS camera and recording today on the 17th of May this reading to you of uh, the history of the Inquisition by Philip von Limbord. As you can see, we start we start in uh, chapter 13 on uh, page 77 in the book or 245 in the PDF which means that we are about one-third of the book because it's 746 pages and this chapter 13 is called the Inquisition introduced into Aragon, France, Toulouse and Italy yeah. so the Inquisition is being introduced to more and more places and what we can make out of this is that it's in Aragon and Toulouse which is mostly in the south of France and of course the boarding country that is Italy on the left in the year of our Lord, 1321, in the month of February, some of the Paterines were discovered in the city of Rome. Some of, some of them who were impenitent were burned alive. Others of them were sent to the church Monte Cassino and to Cava, to be there kept till they recanted. The Pope and Roman Senate made also severe laws against heretics, and because the Milanese was oft infected with heresy, Frederick, by an imperial edict, commanded all convicted of that crime to be delivered over to the flames, or their blasphemous tongues to be cut out, if the keeping them alive would, prove, would prove a terror, uh, if the keeping them alive would prove a terror to others, which Reynold affirms to be a severe but most just edict. This very year, Antichrist Pope Gregory the Ninth gave a famous instance of his tyranny and injustice. Isolinus, lord of Padua and vassal of the emperor Frederick, constantly adhered to, this, to his master and faithfully took the emperor's part against the faction of the pope. On this the pope endeavored to render him infamous by the charge of heresy, that under this specious uh, pretense, uh, pretense, sorry, that under this special, uh, special pretense he might expel him as, dominan, uh, as dominions. But as he failed in this, he stirred up his children against them this very year, that being delivered by them into his power, he might punish him as he pleased. In order to this, he sent letters to Isoline beseeching him to take better measures and admonished him to renounce his errors. A copy of these letters he sent to his two sons, young Iseline and uh, Alteric, who pretended, who pretended to abhor their father's wickedness and promised the Antichrist Pope Gregory of, of their own accord, as Reynold relates, that they would deliver their miserable father, let me just see, I have to put this, that they would deliver their miserable father into the hands of the censors of the faith, means the Inquisition, eh? if he persisted obstinately in his wickedness, and that they might not lose the inheritance of their ancestors. Upon this the Antichrist gave them to understand that he had deferred coming to extremities against their father for the sake, for their sake, whom he believed still to continue in the true worship of God, that they might not be involved in his misfortune. For, says he, the crime of heresy, like that of high treason, disinherits the children. Then he beseeches and commands them that they would use all possible means to deter their father from heresy and the protection of heretics and that, that, he, des and that he despised their admonitions that would consult their own safety by sending him, as they had promised, before the Antichrist's tribunal. Nor is it to be wondered at, at, at Reynold, that this advice should be given to the sons against their own father, 
since the cause of the divine being, of whom all paternity is named, is to be preferred to all human affections. The year following, 1232, the Inquisition was brought to Aragon. The bishop of the Haifka, uh, of the Haifka, Haifka in Aragon was reported to err in matters of faith. Upon this, Antichrist Gregory committed the office of making inquisition against him to friar, uh, against him to friar Peter Caderite of the predicant order, and commanded James, king of Aragons, that he uh, of Aragons, that he should not suffer him, or those who advised the or council, he should think fit to make use of, to be injured by any means whatsoever and that he might entirely extirpate heresy out of the province of Tarracon. He gave commission to the Archbishop of Tarracon and his suffragans to constitute inquisitors against heretical brevity of the order of predicants by a bull in these words, quote, Since the evening of the world is now declining, and we admonish and beseech our brotherhood, and strictly command you by our written apostolic words, as you regard the divine judgment, that with diligent, diligent care you make inquiry against heretics, and render them infamous, by the assistance of their friars' predicants, and others whom you shall judge fit for this business, and that you proceed against all who are culpable and infamous, according to our statutes lately published against heretics, unless they will from the heart absolutely obey the commands of the Church, meaning the Roman Catholic Church, yeah? which statutes we send you enclosed in our bull, and that ye also proceed against the receivers, abettors, and favorers of heretics, according to the same statutes. But if any will quite abjure the heretical plague, and return to the ecclesiastical unity, again, the Roman Catholic Church meant, grant them the benefit of absolution according to the form of the Church, and enjoin them with the usual penance. Unquote. Amongst the inquisitors appointed by them, Friar Raymond Peciafortius Barninonymphis, what a different name, <laughs> Raymond Peciafortius Barninonymphis, was particularly famous, who wrote a formulary of the manner of proceeding against heretics, beginning, I believe that heretics, etc., which was of so great authority that Gregory enjoined, Pope Gregory, Antichrist Gregory, enjoined William, Archbishop-elect of Tarragon, to follow it in everything. Bisovius gives us this formulary entire in his Annals under the year 1235 in paragraph 5. Now, in France there were not wanting some who stirred up the remains of the Albigenses, so that, as Bisovius said, they were grievously oppressed, the, uh, they very, sorry, they very grievously oppressed the inquisitors and other persons appointed by the Apostolic See for the direction and defense of the Catholic faith. Perhaps they strove to prevent so intolerable a yoke being upon their necks. Says a little footnote here. Now, Antichrist Pope Gregory the Ninth excited Louis the King, and then we're going to continue here. Louis the King against them, he advised him to join uh, sorry uh, against them he advised them to join with the Archbishop of Vienne, uh, which is Vienna today probably, some person famous for his wisdom and justice who might know what pertained to the ecclesiastic right, what to the royal and what to the rights of others. Let me just change the picture here, that we can here see the cover of the book that we are reading. Okay. He also exhorted Blanche, the queen, to persuade her son to, pre to perfect so righteous a work. The same author tells us that the same year, after great 
after great struggling, the Inquisition was brought into Toulouse upon the first day of the festival of Dominic, but not without a great tumult of the people raised by a seditious sermon of a, fil of a filly monk upon occasion of the death of a certain matron of Toulouse, who lived near the convent of the predicants and had been heretic hereticated before she died. Quote, when this came to be public, Friar William Arnaldi, an inquisitor, condemned her for an heretic and left her to the secular court. After this, the prior of the friar's predicants, Fu Pontius of Adge, which is a city there, explaining those words of Ecclesiastics uh, 40, 48, Elias the prophet rose as fire, and his word burned like a torch to a vast company that had met together about nine, and adapting his words to the festival and the present business, turned himself and bowed and bent to the east and west, to the north and south, and cried out towards every part with as loud a voice as he could, repeating it oftentimes, In the name of God and his servant, Saint Dominic, I do from this hour renounce all faith with heretics, their favorers and believers. Then he bawled out again, I adjure the Catholics in the name of God, that laying aside all fear, they would give their testimony to the truth. And thus left off. About seven days after this meeting many came in, by those means, by whose means the inquisitors found out a way to the recesses of darkness. Many of them abjured their heresy, some discovered others and promised that at a proper opportunity they would detect more. However, the inquisitors were the year following ejected from Toulouse, but that they were, but that they were restored there again we learn from Luke Wading, who in his history of the Friars Minors relates that in the year 1328 there were at Toulouse Friar William Arnaldi of the Predicant Order and Seraphinus of uh, de San Tiberio of the Minors, Inquisitors of Heretics. The same author gives us also the epistle of Antichrist Pope Gregory the Ninth to the deacon of the Order of Friars Minors in Navarre, and to Master Peter de Lidegaria, a predicant friar living at Pampilona, which begins rumor and uh, etc., in which, amongst other things, there is this. <coughs> Since therefore, according to the offer enjoined us, we are bound to root out all offenses from the kingdom of God, and as much as in us lies to oppose such beasts, we deliver into our hands the sword of the word of God, which, according to the words of the prophet Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 10, ye ought not to keep back from blood. But, inspired with a zeal for the Catholic faith like Phineas, make diligent inquisition concerning these pestilent wretches, their believers, receivers and abettors and proceed against those who by such inquisition shall be found guilty according to the canonical sanctions and our statutes, which we have lately published to confound heretical pravity, calling in against them, if need be, the, absist the, the assistance of the secular arm. Given at the Lateran, 8 calendar day of May, anno 1230 what we just read, 38, that was. Now, it can be doubted that the office of the delegated inquisition was in these times introduced into Italy, because the inhabitants of Placentia drove out from their city friar Rowland, the inquisitor, in the year 1234. The year following, the Pope committed the office of the Inquisition um, to the prior of St. Mary at Gradus, and to Friar Ruth Radulf, a predicant at Viterbo, commissioning them to inquire out all heretics coming from other cities, 
and to absolve from censures such who abjured their heresy, and reconciled themselves to the church. Upon this affair he gave letters to both of them at Perus, the second of Ides of August, and ninth year of his pontificate. But two years after, 13th calendar of June, so 13th of June, in the 11th <coughs> and the 11th of his pontificate at Viterbo, he sent letters to the provincial Lombardy, a predicant by which he invested him with the power of making inquisitors. The letter begins thus, Illi Humani, <coughs> and so on. So this is just the address. I think it worth while to give you them entire, because they very distinctively represent the office given to the Inquisition. After beginning with the usual complaint of the rise of heresy, he enjoins the inquisitors their office in these words, quote, We therefore be willing to prevent the danger of so many souls, entreat, admonish and beseech your wisdom, and strictly command you by these apostolic writings, as you have any regard for the divine judgment, that you appoint some of the brethren committed to your care, men learned in the law of the Lord, and such as you know to be fit for this purpose, according to the limitations of our order, to be preachers general to the clergy and all and people assembled, where they can conveniently do it. And in order the more effectually to execute their office, let them take into their assistance some discreet persons, and carefully inquire out heretics, and such, <coughs> sorry, and such, as are defamed for heresy. And if they find out either and really culpable, or such who are defamed, let them proceed against them according to our statutes, lately published against heretics, unless upon examination they will absolutely obey the commands of the Church. Let them also proceed against the receivers, defenders and abettors of heretics, according to the same statutes. But if any will abjure their heretical defilement and return to the ecclesiastical unity, let them have the favor of absolution according to the form of the Church and be enjoined the usual penance. But let them be more especially careful that such who appear to return don't commit impiety under the specious pretense of piety and the angel of Satan thus transform himself into an angel of light. And this is the synagogue of Satan speaking, right? Therefore, he continues, let them peruse the statutes which we have thought fit to publish concerning this, af this affair, that they may beware of their subtlety, according to the discretion given them of the Lord, and that they may more freely and effectually execute the office committed to them in all the premises we... Uh, Consigning, uh, we confiding in the mercy of Almighty God and the authority of the blessed Apostle Peter and Paul, remit for three years the penance enjoined them, to all who shall attend their preaching for twenty days and their several stations, and likewise to those who shall give them assistance, counsel or favor in their endeavors to subdue heretics, their abettors, receivers and defenders, in their fortified places and castles. And as for those who shall happen to die in the prosecution of this affair, we grant a plenary pardon of all their sins for which they are contrite in their hearts, and which they confess with their mouths, and that nothing may be wanting to be set fri to, to, uh, to the set friars in their prosecuting the foresaid business we grant them, by the tenor of these presents, full power of involving <coughs> under the ecclesiastical censure all who, let's see, all who, continue on the top of the page, <laughs> all who contradict and rebel against them. We also grant them the power to restrain under the same censure 
from the office of preaching, which by no means belong to them, the questuary predicants, whose business is to simplify to ask only charitable supports and to sell an indulgence, if they should happen to have one. In the same year, 1235, on the 17th day of June, Antichrist Pope Gregory the Ninth commanded the Bishop of Huefka, the Prior of Barcelona, and Friar William Barbarano, a predicant, that they should not suffer the office by any means to relax, but should make inquisition against heretics in the province of Terracon, and proceed according to the canons. He also appointed Friar Robert, a predicant, inquisitor general against heretics in the whole kingdom of France, and commanded him so to proceed in the causes committed to him, as that the innocent <coughs> sorry, as that the innocent should not perish, and that iniquity should not remain unpunished. The bull of this commission is extant, dated at Perouse, tenth of day uh, tenth of September, in the ninth year of his pontificate in which he prescribed the form of penance to such as, as abjured their heresy and ordained many other things against heretics and commanded the provincial of the Teutonic order of predicants that he should choose uh, fit persons out of all Germany to preach in every place the words of the cross against the heretics and Saracens. So, as you see, this was a quite a small, a little chapter. And I really have to get into that book again because it is so difficult to read. <coughs> Not only because the letters are, and the words are so difficult to read, but so extensive, long sentences. And I really have to get a little bit more, get into it, to give you a better quality reading than this one. So I keep this one short. We'll stop that here and we'll continue next time in chapter 14. And I hope that you will forgive me that this reading is not up to par with all my other readings that I do. But I hope that you also understand why this is still a book that I have to pursue reading altogether. It is nevertheless, even though it is so r difficultly written, because it is 17th century English, which is very hard for a German of the 20th century to understand. Um, this book is so important to understand. And because I don't read Henry Charles Lear's History of the Inquisition in the Middle Ages in English, but only in German, I think my English brethren should embrace this reading that I give to them. And if you don't like the way that I read, uh, you know there are free download links of the book that you can get it for yourself and that you can read it for yourself. If you think it is too exhausting to listen to my voice or whatever and sometimes when I make comments I mean today I didn't give any comments because there wasn't anything to give comments and this was just how the Inquisition was introduced in the south of France in the beginning of the 14th century and I think we all understood that the real work of the Inquisition or the real secrets of the Inquisition come a little bit later in this book and it will get more and more interesting as we read along in this book but for today, I thank you very much for your attention, for watching, for listening, for sharing. Please share these videos. There is no copyright on any of my work. At least I don't ask any copyright of it. And it can be spread all over the internet and all over the world because the time is short. And the, 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 the devil knows that he has only a short time and he will make it hard for us to spread news like this to the coming generations. Because even in the generation that I am living in, I'm a little bit above 14, uh, 50 now, um, we are most of the time deprived of this knowledge. Don't be a part of deprive future generations of the same knowledge. Spread this reading as far as you can. Thank you, and until next time, God bless you. Maranatha.